Bestbookbits.com presents Confessions of a Public Speaker by Scott Birkin, published in 2009 and weighing 240 pages. In this hilarious and highly practical book, author and professional speaker, Scott Birkin reveals the techniques behind what great communicators do and shows how anyone can learn to use them. Well, for managers and teachers and anyone else who talks and expects someone to listen, Confessions of a Public Speaker provides an insider's perspective on how to effectively present ideas to anyone. It's a unique, entertaining, and instructional romp throughout the embarrassments and triumphs Scott has experienced over 15 years of speaking to crowds of all sizes. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Confessions of a Public Speaker. If you'd like to be good at something, the first thing to go out the window is the notion of perfection. Know that your response to a mistake defines the audience's response. If I respond to spilling water on my pants as if it were the sinking of the Titanic, the audience will see it and me as a tragedy. But if I'm cool or better yet, find it funny, the audience will do the same. Good speakers usually find when they finish that they have been four versions of the speech. The one they delivered, the one they prepared, the one the newspapers say was delivered, and the one on the way home they wish they had delivered. Never plan to use the full time given. And it's often the case that the thing speakers obsess about are the opposite of what the audience cares about. They want to be entertained. They want to learn. And most of all, they want you to do well. Many mistakes you can make while performing do not prevent those things from happening. It's the mistakes you make before you even say a word that matter more. These include the mistakes of not having an interesting opinion, of not thinking clearly about your points, and not planning ways to make those points relevant to your audience. Those are the ones that make the difference. If you can figure out how to get those right, not much else will matter. If you pretend to have no fears of public speaking, you deny yourself the natural energy your body is giving you. Anxiety creates a kind of energy you can use, just as excitement does. Ian Tyson, a stand-up comedian and motivational speaker, offered this gem of advice. The body's reaction to fear and excitement is the same. The body's reaction to fear and excitement is the same. So it becomes a mental decision. Am I afraid or am I excited? But I don't practice to make perfect and I don't memorize. If I did either, I'd sound like a robot or worse, like a person trying very hard to say things and an exact, specific, and entirely unnatural style, which people can spot a mile away. My intent is to simply know my material so well, and I'm very comfortable with it. Confidence, not perfection, is the goal. The confidence that comes from practicing makes it possible to improvise and respond to unexpected things, like hecklers, tough questions, bored audiences, or equipment failures that might occur during the talk. Other ways to reduce physical stress include getting to the venue early so you don't have to rush. Doing tech and sound rehearsal well before your start time. Walking around the stage so your body feels safe in the room. Sitting in the audience so you have a physical sense of what they will see. Eating early enough so you won't be hungry, but not right before your talk. Talking to some people in the audience before you start if it suits you so it's no longer made up of strangers. Friends are less likely to try to eat you. You can minimize most of the fears by realizing that we speak in public all the time. You're already good at public speaking. The average person says 15,000 words a day. 15,000 words a day. I realize that the crowd size is irrelevant. What matters is having a dense crowd. If you ever face a sparsely populated audience, Do whatever you have to do to get them to move together. As you plan your talk, start with the goal of satisfying the things listed below. People come because they, one, want to learn something. Two, wish to be inspired. Three, hope to be entertained. Four, have a need they hope you will satisfy. And five, desire to meet other people interested in the subject. And six, seek a positive experience they can share with others. And seven, are forced to be there by their bosses, parents, professors, or spouses. To prepare well, number one, take a strong position in the title. Number two, think carefully about your specific audience. 
Number three, make your specific points as concisely as possible. And four, know the likely counter-arguments from an intelligent audience. John Mina, molecular biologist and director of the Brain Center at Seattle Pacific University, believes 10 minutes is the maximum amount of time most people can pay attention to most things. 10 minutes. In his best-selling book, Brain Rules, Pear Press, Medina spends an entire chapter applying his theory to the challenges of teaching. The 10-minute rule is at the core of how he plans his lectures. He never spends more than 10 minutes on a single point, and he makes sure to structure the entire lecture around a sequence of points he knows the audience is interested in hearing. With enough study about the audience's interest and a 10-minute time limit, boredom can be kept at bay for an hour. I can say I have 30 minutes to talk to you and five points to make. I will spend five minutes on each point and save the remaining time for any questions. That takes about 10 seconds to say, but for that small price, I continue to own the attention of the room because they know the plan. The simplest kind of tension to build and then release is the one I mentioned before, problem and solution. If your talk consists of several problems important to the audience and you promise to release the tension created by those problems by solving each one, you'll score big. Get the audience involved. Ask for a show of hands. Quiz them with trivia. Give them a problem to solve. When you enforce a popular rule, you re-engage everyone who supports that rule. You restore your power and earn the audience's respect. So don't hesitate to cut off a blow hard Silence the guy on his cell phone and interrupt the table having a private but distracting conversation. As long as you are polite and direct, you'll be a hero. Always plan and practice to end early. Videotape yourself giving a presentation to weed out the problems with it. And that's a wrap on Confessions of a Public Speaker by Scott Birkin. Subscribe to our channel now for future summaries and check out our website, Best bookbits.com for the written summary and audio to buy the book use our website store where you'll find this book and hundreds more to browse and purchase thanks for watching and i hope you learned a thing or two about confessions of a public speaker have yourself an amazing day and stay tuned for more